Welcome back to Computer Science, exploring variables and creating a clicker game. Take a moment to pause the video and review your vocabulary words. In this lesson, you'll be able to create a clicker game in Sprite Lab, where sprites can be removed to score points and create a variable that stores information and changes over time. Pause the video and review your I can statements. Think about information that changes over time, like your height, age, the weather, and our mood. Take a moment to reflect on when it's useful to change what's stored in a variable. The value stored in a variable can change over time. Look at this example. When we start, our count variable is set at zero. After a few seconds, it increases by one. When a user enters information into a prompt, the computer stores it with a variable. If the code uses a variable, the computer will look for a matching label to find the stored information. Let's make a prediction. What do you think will happen after typing a number into the prompt? Pause the video for a second and see if you can figure it out. That's right, the program will make that many new carrot sprites. Let's make another uh, prediction. What will the bunny say? Pause the video for a second and see if you can figure it out after reading the code. You got it, the bunny will say five. All right, let's go over to code.org and let's practice together. Counting with variables. Let's learn to use variables with numbers. Remember that variables are labels for information used in a program. This new block allows you to store a value in a variable without using a prompt. Here's what it looks like. So you're going to drag a set of blocks over to the workspace and connect it to under when run. Change the question marks to count or another label, then make the bunny sprite say the number that is stored in the variable. All right, let's move this up and free our workspace up. Okay, let's grab our set score two and change the score to count. Now we need to go get the number variable and connect it here and change the number to three. Now we need to have our sprite say, so let's go get um, our variable count for four seconds. And there we go. try another one. The value stored in a variable can change over time. Let's build a program that uses the same variable multiple times. A new block has been added to the variables section of your toolbox. It looks like this. The block adds another number to the value stored in a variable. It only works when the variable is used to store a number. You're going to connect a change by block under the at four seconds event block. Use the same label for each variable block in your program. Connect a say block under the change by block. Make the sprite say the value of the variable after it is changed, and then press run and wait four seconds. Your sprite should say the new number. All right, let's move this up, and get our workspace clear. Okay, let's add the change question mark by one block here and we're going to switch this to count let's get our sprite say count for let's uh, yes leave it at four seconds and run it and there we go it changed to one excellent let's do a couple more 
This program makes the sprite say the value of count each time it's clicked, but the sprite is saying the same number each time. What block can you add to the program to make the sprite say a different number each time it's clicked? You're going to make your program change the value of the variable each time the sprite is clicked and press run. Then click your sprite repeatedly to make it count. Extra challenge, you can change the when clicked to while clicked to make the sprite count rapidly. Okay, let's drop our change variable under the win and change that to count. Count by one, and you can see that it says when clicked. When you click it, it's going to count. Let's change this to two seconds. Let's click run. I'm doing something wrong here purposefully, just in case you do it too because I did it the first time. You have to make sure you click on your sprite after pressing run. Let's reset it. Now let's click on our sprite and see what happens. Okay, when clicked, now it's going to count. One, two, three, yep, see it's counting. Your two seconds, great job. Okay, let's do one more before you, oh, I wanted to show you this, yes. But don't forget the hint there uh, if you run into some trouble. All right, let's do one more. This is what your big activity is going to be, a carrot clicker. In the second half of this lesson, you'll create a clicker game that others can play. In the clicker game, the user scores points by clicking sprites to remove them. The code here is an example of a finished game like what you might build. You'll be able to choose different sprite costumes and customize the rules of your game. You're gonna read through the code and make a prediction about how it works, and then press run and play the game by clicking the sprites and see how many points you can score. You could, you could make changes to the code here if you want to, um, but through the rest of the activities, you're gonna make your own game. Okay, here's all the code. You'll want to spend some time reading through this to kind of figure out what you're gonna build and get an idea. Okay, and click Run. Now you just click on the carrots and see how many points you can get, and this gives you a really good idea of a game that you're gonna get to create for your big project. I only scored 13, I bet you'll do better. <laughs> All right, it's your turn. Time to put your coding skills to the test. Head over to your computer, sign in to code.org, and tackle those levels like the coding champ you are. Great job, Epic Comet. You're ready to move on to the next activity.